The Apple Silicon Mac Pro is coming and I think it's coming next month at Apple's March event because we just got the biggest leaks ever pointing to a March event launch and this is going to be insane because we got even more leaks of what is going to be packed into this thing and it's better than I could ever imagine and I'm going to explain why. But first I've got to go through why I thought this would be such a disappointing upgrade. Now first of all, Apple missed their two year timeline which meant that the Mac Pro was supposed to come in November of last year, but they totally missed. But now it looks like it's coming next month. Now, the reason why I thought it would be so disappointing was that Mark Gurman, the most accurate Apple leaker out there, said that the new Mac Pro would look identical to the current model, which was kind of expected because it's easy for Apple to do, just reuse the same chassis. However, they said that it would lack expandable RAM. Yes, the Mac Pro that's supposed to be upgradable, modular, the most customizable Mac you can get is not gonna have user replaceable RAM, so that is extremely disappointing. It means that the RAM, the memory is gonna be on the actual SOC chip just like the other Apple Silicon Macs. Now that leak completely crushed my dreams because Majin Buu actually way back in March of last year, he said that it would actually be possible to have external RAM up to one terabyte and here's a chart of how it could potentially work. However, he did say that the external memory controller was very, very slow in terms of access times even slower than the older Xeon, so the Apple memory team was working on a solution for that. But it looks like, based on what Mark Gurman said, that failed, they're not gonna have user replaceable RAM. But then it got even worse. On January 25th, Mark Gurman came out and said that the next Mac Pro is also gonna lack user upgradable GPUs in addition to non-upgradable RAM. So basically, you would be stuck with whatever configuration you would have when you buy it, just like the Mac Studio, the Mac Mini, all the regular Apple Silicon Macs, no upgradability in terms of the RAM or the graphics. So essentially, that leaves the storage as the only user upgradable component in the new Mac Pro, which would be a massive fail. It would basically be like a huge Mac Studio with a bunch of PCI Express slots for audio cards, whatever custom cards that people would need, professionals would need. That is just so disappointing to not have upgradable GPUs or RAM. And then we got this, an absolute nuclear bomb of a leak from 9to5Mac exclusive. iOS 16.4 code references new compute module device in the Mac Pro. So basically, the Compute Module is a brand new device class that runs iOS or a variant of it. And there would be at least two of them, which is the Compute Module 13.1 and 13.3. So two different models, which to me kind of sounds like M2 Max and M2 Ultra. So what it basically sounds like is a custom Apple GPU that you slot in with an M2 Max chip with a bunch of GPU cores to improve your graphics performance. But there is a catch, which kind of makes that not as good, which I'll explain later on in the video. But the main takeaway from this leak is that it's connected to iOS 16.4. Now, if you didn't already know, Apple usually has a huge mid-cycle software update that they release in the springtime. So iOS, macOS, basically all the main software is released in spring, and many times it's right after they have a March event and release new products that come with that new software. So this points to the Mac Pro coming in spring right after their March event. And adding further evidence to this idea, Apple also filed new Mac devices running Bluetooth 5.3 amid the rumors of a new MacBook Air and Mac Pro. So everything is kind of lining up perfectly for this Mac Pro to launch. And also we just had the M2 Max and M2 Pro MacBook Pros launch back in January. So it would be perfect for the Mac Pro to launch 
in the spring. But now getting back to the whole compute module leak, I think this could be even better than just a GPU that you slot in. And I actually have two different scenarios. Scenario one is of course, the slottable GPU card that you plug in for extra raw GPU performance, but option two is even better. But before I explain, I've gotta talk about a sponsor, Pulseway. Imagine this, all of your systems in one central place. No need for multiple platforms to monitor and manage your systems when you can get Pulseway an all-in-one IT monitoring and management platform. Whether you're out getting groceries, taking the dock for a walk, or just don't want to get out of bed, Pulseway's mobile app keeps you connected. Monitor all of your systems, send commands, apply patches, remote control troubled systems, or manage access. It's really the only platform you'll need. Their customizable patch management policies are going to keep your system safe and updated as you wish. Create multi-level automation workflows easily and start automating repetitive tasks, giving you your time back. With more time saved, you can get back to doing the things you love. Pulseway makes IT all possible. Get organized and take control of your systems with Pulseway's industry-leading IT management platform. The best of all is that you can try it all for free. Get a 14-day trial when you use the link in the description below. Now getting back to the new leaked compute modules in the Mac Pro, I want to start off with that second awesome scenario, and I want to refer to a tweet from Jeff Benjamin, which he posted at basically the same time, actually a little bit earlier than I did, but here is a great idea. Let's say that you have a new Apple Silicon Mac Pro in the same 2019 Mac Pro case, but with multiple swappable brains. Yes, the brain is basically, like he said, the system on package. No need for networking, storage, etc. on the actual brain card. That way you can have the fastest Mac Pro with every single upgrade each M-Series iteration if you pay for a new module. So essentially, when the new Mac Pro comes out, you're gonna buy the new Apple Silicon Mac Pro chassis and you're gonna be able to choose your module that plugs in. So whether it's an M2 Max or an M2 Ultra, you choose it and it comes completely done. Now, in the future, let's say a couple years down the road, few years down the road, a new M3 Ultra or M3 Extreme, M4 Ultra, M4 Extreme comes out and you purchase the module by itself. Then you're gonna take out your M2 module, then plug in the new one and there you go, you just upgraded your entire system. Now the actual Mac Pro itself, or on the inside, you're gonna have your power supply that remains there, the cooling system, you're gonna have the main motherboard, which is actually not the main motherboard. It's a daughter board or a secondary board that's on the Mac Pro itself. It's gonna house the upgradable storage and everything else that you need with the PCI Express slots, but the actual brains of the machine is on the compute card itself. So this idea is insane because you're only buying the main chassis once and you upgrade the brains. That is the most modular machine that you can get and professionals are gonna love this. Now this idea basically has a potential to make the Mac Pro upgradable and timeless with Apple Silicon and that would be a game changer in the industry. Now I know you're probably gonna say that that sounds nuts, it's insane, there's no way they can fit it. Well, if you look at the current Mac Pro and how large the current GPU models are, they are absolutely massive. And I would go as far as to say that these Mac Pro GPU cards that are available right now are larger in volume than the actual Mac Studio and the entire Mac Studio, which includes the motherboard, the SSDs, the huge cooling fan, all of that stuff is smaller than these current Mac Pro cards. Now the cool thing is that if you don't need a lot of graphics, you can instead buy a compute module that's focused on having maximized CPU performance without all of the GPU upgrades and cores that you don't need. 
Now, I know some of you are gonna say that this is not like Apple. They're not gonna allow you to go the cheap route by just upgrading the brains itself. They want you to buy the whole computer. And yes, Apple can actually do this as well. Because if Apple wants to sell more of the Mac Pro chassis, then when the time comes, they could just release a new chassis that has certain upgrades, like let's say a new, more efficient, better power supply or better fans, maybe a new black color in terms of the finish, or maybe some new extra ports on the chassis itself, or better yet, let's say the new chassis supports Thunderbolt 5 on those case ports, and you want them, so that's why people would be buying the new chassis upgrades as well, because otherwise you're not gonna be able to take advantage of Thunderbolt 5 on those case ports. Now to me, all of that sounds absolutely amazing. You're getting a fully upgradable Mac Pro chassis with brains that you keep swapping out, but there's somebody else, Hishnash on Twitter, that completely disagrees because he says that these compute modules are running iOS 16.4, which means that they're very similar to the studio display, which has an iPhone chip built in running iOS, kind of for all of the connection and main thinking that the display has to do to perform as good as it does, it handles all of that. So he is saying that the Mac Pro compute modules will actually just have the regular M2 Ultra or M2 Max or whatever they call it and kind of an assistant iOS chip running some kind of version or kernel of iOS. And that of course brings us to the other scenario where these compute modules are simply additional custom Apple GPUs with some kind of other chip name. Now, of course, I didn't think this would happen because when you're slotting in an additional card, it's not fully taking advantage of unified memory because you're gonna have your M2 Ultra chip on the main motherboard and then a separate card, so everything is not happening within the same package, so you're losing efficiency, but it could still happen for the tasks that really need heavy raw GPU performance, like 3D rendering in Blender, for example. But if Apple does this, it would make it really easy for people to purchase an additional one or two custom GPU cards to slot in and get a huge boost in terms of graphics performance. And with that said, it would also make it extremely expensive, like Hatchy the Otter says here, we're gonna have a $55,000 Apple Silicon machine no problem. Hishnash even thinks it might even be 80K by adding a bunch of these compute modules inside of the Mac Pro. And then making it even more likely, Benjamin on Twitter said that the Mac Pro with PCLE GPU is confirmed according to a new patent, which he showed right here. Apparently, this shows that Apple is working on getting these GPU module cards working with an Apple Silicon Mac. So with that said, those were the two scenarios with the whole brains compute module, upgradable, everything packed in. So, that's that. so with that said, those were the two scenarios. The first one, very simple, just custom Apple GPU card that slots in, or the second one where the entire brains is on the card itself running the Mac Pro, easy to upgrade. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below and click that circle above to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.